Right, I've decided to jump forward on the build a little bit because um, we've we've got the the basic side pieces, the roof and, and what have you, the outer skin of the vehicle done. So we're not far off putting the red down and I want to do the trailer at the same time. Um, so we're going to build the um, trailer up as, as far as we need for painting red. I still have to paint the inside um, grey and we've got one or two little fittings to do on the doors. Um, but right now I want to get this trailer knocked together. So um, I've jumped ahead to uh, step 31 um, and we actually start with um, with the wheels but uh, I'm not sure I want to do that. And then there's a, fr a frame which has what looks like a couple of planks on it. Um, I don't think the it looks like it's open underneath the trailer. There's no floor pan that I can see particularly. I'm not quite sure what would have been in there. I imagine hose and and stuff most likely. But anyway, going to build up the, uh, the 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 basic box. Um, when we come to do the final painting, um, the mud guards are black, um, and we they're on the outside at this rather than part on the inside as they are on the vehicle so we can just leave those off for now right let's make up this um, floor frame um, so I suppose our starting point actually is this here because there's a little notch in it for the trailer arm so that that's quite important um, that that's in place um, and Hmm, actually, um, I think it should go underneath, although it appears on the instructions to sit on top, but that couldn't be right. So I think it goes underneath like that, which would make sense with those location lugs and everything. So let's glue that in to start with. I don't know why I have my glue out of its anti fall over base. Right. So I'll just run a little bit of glue into the gap. Extra thin. Okay, that should be okay. So I'll let that set for a moment. Then we've got this piece, which plugs in at the front and sits there like that perfectly. That is a nice fit. Okay, that looks quite good. Just making sure that it's nice and flat. Don't want that off center in any way. That all looks good according to the grid on the cutting mat. So then this piece goes across and sits on there between these, the, the gap in the frame. That's hardly touching. Let's just have fit one of these. If that goes over the edge, then I think that's the best way forward. Yeah, that's gonna give us a flat base for that to contact onto, so Put the planks on first. So I can glue this first side in while I'm just holding it. I'm not pressing it together, I don't want any glue oozing out, I'm just gently holding it in place. OK, 
Okay. And we can do that on the other side now. Now you you have to be careful because you could have it off center, which would mean that we're going to have a bit of a problem with fitting the body onto the top of this frame if we're not careful. So you need to make sure that it's um, sat inside on both sides. Right. Okay, that's looking good. And that massively improves the ability to fit that piece then. So we'll tack it on at the axle crossover point in the middle there. A good dollop of glue where it's making contacts on the side. There we go, that looks okay, doesn't it? So the last thing to do is just plop the wheels on. Okay, that's our parts cleaned up and we're ready to uh, build this little trailer body up. Um, one thing I will say is you have to do some very careful clean up on the top edge of the two side pieces because the sprue gate goes right down into the lip that is used to locate the roof. And if you don't clean that up properly, you're not going to get a good join at all. So... We should be able to glue this lot in. I've also cleaned up the little trailer handle and leg. So we can have a look at that as well. So I'm going to have the leg up. So we've just got to make sure we have, there's a slight angle on it. We want to make sure that's in the right place. So I'm assuming that goes all the way up. There we go, that should be enough to hold that in place. Just make sure it's straight. Yeah, brilliant. So that's that in. And then we have this handle that uh, has a wedge on it, which meets with this wedge. So that, yeah, just changes direction slightly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make that wet. And plop that on like so. Just make sure it's nicely pushed down. There's as little gap as possible showing. There we go. Right, that's the base of the trailer done. So having test fitted this, I think we're not going to have any problems. So there is a little uh, gap there which helps you line this up nicely. So roof and one of the ends um, to start with is the way to go. So I'll just pop that in. We can glue that in place. And then 
fairly sharpish we're going to get a side piece put that on and that's just going to help us get that nice and straight as you can see we can now glue that in place Okay, and put the other end in now. There we go, the fit is really good actually. As long as you've cleaned that, that top edge up, you should have no problems. managed to get a gluey fingerprint on it that's not good is it sort that in a minute right we'll just let the glue flash off and then we'll deal with that just checking that it's uh, holding in place all the way around Right, fiberglass pen. I have done a video on how to do this. There we go, we'll let it dry and give it another go over and that should be okay. So our uh, sub-assembly is ready for the red paint are uh, done. Um, I've just got to fill and final sand uh, one or two little bits on, on this. I have tested it on the shell and the um, it fits. Uh, with a little bit of, of wiggle room actually so it, it's a little bit slack but um, it, it, it does go in so we can definitely paint it first and then um, glue it all into place afterwards so I'm not worried about that at all so that's that's good um, so just a bit of filling to do and then mask the windows and and we're ready for the off so um, I'm gonna crack on with that the the, the gaps are just hairline gaps and it's just really a case of um, trying to make them not be visible once um, it's painted so uh, this Vallejo put it I find great for these um, little hairline jobs we have put our primers down um, you can see I've used two primers a grey and a pink um, the grey is really for anything that's going to be grey or black in the case of the trailer uh, including the arm that which will be black but um, so yeah, the the roof is a sort of a dark grey, but there is a, a red section here on the back, so that's why there's a little pink strip on the back. Um, and then the interior will be a continuation of the light grey that we've used, and then anything that's pink obviously is going to be red. Um, and then we've got some detail painting to do on the grill. Um, so this is all um, Ultimate Primer, um, and it says don't thin it, but I always do, and I use Ultimate Thinners to, to, to thin it down, to be honest. Um, what I can show you is that we've done a little bit of, because we just wanted to paint this little section, um, uh, a quick way of, of masking off what you've done is to use um, some cling film. Uh, I'm a big fan of using cling film for masking awkward shapes or um, uh, large areas you know uh, so not tiny small details in it um, but it's a good way of quickly masking I mean if you mask that with masking tape it would have taken uh, a little while even if you just wrapped it round um, and you've got some risk of damaging some of the more delicate details um, uh, the steering wheel and what have you um, but using uh, cling film, it, it took seconds and you, you just wrap it around. And then you can see that I've also used foil. I, I sometimes use foil. The, the advantage of foil is it'll hold its shape a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it was just a quick and dirty way of getting the uh, the pink down. But it works really well. So I'm just going to take that away and check that we've um, saved our model from anything we didn't want. 
so engine bay is good it's a small amount of touch up at the top but it, it's minor there we go we've got no ingress whatsoever of our pink paint there so that's good and we won't be putting any more paint down until the outer shell's been been um is ready to be painted in the red which we'll do once it's constructed so i'm happy with that quick and dirty really effective <laughs> Time to get the red down on the outside of this thing. Um, you'll notice that I've not masked anything because red's really the first block colour that I'm putting down on, on, on the main surfaces. Um, anything else has been intended as a, a, a primer, including the grey on the roof. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put the red down, let that dry off, um, get it clear coated and protected, and then we can mask um, around the areas where we need to do the black and the grey and stuff, which will, which will just be easier, I think. Um, I, I've had a change of heart on the colour I'm going to use for this, and we're going to use uh, Humbrol Enamel Gloss 19, um, which is a nice, bright, vibrant red, um, which I've just mixed up, um, and I'm about to get into my airbrush. So let's do that, and then we can crack on with getting this done okay there we go right and before we start spray painting which we'll do in a moment I'm just gonna clean some stuff up so this is a, a jar of white spirit that I use for um, cleaning up and actually it was fresh white spirit it's only got the red paint in it from cleaning my uh, uh, paint mixer so There we go, nice and easy. The, the enjoyable thing about using um, enamel paints is the ease of clean up. It is so much easier than acrylic paints, which is another enjoyable feature of using enamels. Right, I'm just going to run a bit round here because I did spill a little bit in the cup and uh, in the rim, I should say, and I'd rather get that out now and make sure I've got nothing getting in the way of the lid. There we 
go and we'll get the lid back on just to avoid any accidents there we go so that's all good and safe right then hopefully we got the mix right and we'll be ready to go so I'm just going to put my mask on um, in my paint mix I've got some uh, slow-mo extender which is just going to help prevent uh, any tip dry um, and then um, enamel humbrol enamel thinners uh, that's the only thing in there um, so without further ado let's get this back boy done
Right, final thing to get some um, uh, paint on really is the ladder. Um, I've given it a quick going over in a grey primer. You can see I've hand brushed it on, um, just for speed really. Um, we're going to paint it in um, light wood and then we may give it a wash. We'll see how, how it comes out. I'm not going to like the fact that it's uniformly one solid colour. Um, so we might give it um, a, a very slight oil wash just to darken it up afterwards. And then there's one or two little bits on here that need to be picked out in, in black. So these little fastening lumps here um, and this little runner here. Um, which I think on the instructions, if memory serves, it's, it's calling out uh, gunmetal. So it, it's sort of a, a, a metalised grey colour that it wants, really. Um, but I might. I think I'm probably going to do them in, in black. And um, I can pick those out with a paint pen then. Um, I, I might not, but I think that's what I'm likely to do. So uh, we're going to get some paint down. Um, I, I'm just going to hand paint these rather than spray them I think although I don't know the problem is if you if you spray it it's it's getting uh, I don't know there haven't decided right we are sort of at the point I say sort of because I've still got one or two little bits to do but we are sort of at the point of final assembly um, so it's going to be a case of assembling and touching up bits and pieces in the main um, and I'm going to start with the trailer because there's fewer parts to to go on there one way or another um, and then we can put it to to one side while bits are drying and then jump onto the 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 main truck so I've got a few bits and pieces to do but the first thing we're going to do is mount the two halves now I've just come to grab my glue and that's not the first time this has happened. Um, it happened on one of the um, smaller ones. It started off with a hairline crack um, and then it broke. Now, I didn't notice this cracking, to be honest. I just came to it and it's broken like that. So um, that means for me that the glue in there is starting to, to dry. This is this is fairly old, but there's, there's quite a bit in here. So it's a bit annoying. I do have another one. Um, ready to go so whether I can decant this glue in I don't know that I want to contaminate it really I'll have a think about that so as that is out of action we'll go for our deluxe precision plastic glue instead and one thing I've noticed about the uh, deluxe precision glue is I never have a problem with this needle clogging up like I do with the uh, contactor professional so I don't know quite why that is whether the angle is better and the glue run, runs back better or viscosity of the glue don't know but it certainly seems to work okay right so this just plops in. Uh, the key is making sure you've got it the right way around. So I put the decals on, decal faces towards the trailer arm. There we go. And because we did lots of test fitting when we were gluing this together, I know that this is just plopping in place okay. Brilliant. So that is our trailer base on. Now I'm just wondering now I've done that, do I need to put these on? Well, certainly before the tires, but oh, they'll go on okay. I think that's probably the next job. You see, by painting it separately, we're preserving any issues of having to mask that little uh, red section there, which is prominent I think our holes have closed up a little bit with paint
Yep. Okay, so let's deal with that next job. Now what I'm going to do is just give this part a bit of a scrape and make sure there's nothing there restricting us getting in. You might be able to hear the rain out there, I don't know. It is lashing down at the moment on our lovely spring Sunday morning. No, there's nothing there going to cause us a problem. But we have got some collected paint from airbrushing. So that is one thing about this kit, the uh, tolerances are so tight that even a small amount of uh, stray paint on your joint is causing you a problem. Okay, let's have a look, see what happens with that now. There we go, simple as that. Right, let's just tidy this one up. I'll put a small amount of glue on the back here. Um, but we're mainly gonna hold it in those location pins. That's looking good. It's been a little challenging to do this on camera, so I did it off camera, but there's our two little handles on, a little bit of CA holding those in place. Um, but yeah, they look good. Tires are going on next, and same as the tires on the rest of the kit, just needed a little bit of seam removal, making sure that the uh, connection point from the moulding processes at the bottom. There we go. That looks good. It's on its legs now, so that is the tyres done. Um, so the next thing is we've got a couple of um, pins. I think they drop down and hold, hold this um, square when it's sort of parked if you like and the, they come up and then they drop down um, so we're going to be showing them in the up position because this is going to be attached to the the fire truck in the end so let's do that next right so we're using um, thin CA because um, it's not going to leave anything like the uh, mark that a medium CA would and we can just dip the part in and hopefully, there we go. So I think this is, um, I think it's five second. Uh, doesn't say, but I've got it in my head that the Zap Thin CA is, is uh, three to five seconds. I might be wrong about that though. Right, our remaining parts I've just cleaned up and are ready to be uh, mounted onto this now. So we've got a whole selection of items that we have to put on. 
I'm going to start with the um, um, trailing lights there. So continuing to use the thin CA as we've got it out, we might as well use it for it'll, it'll work well for most of this anyway. Okay, that's the lights on. Now, obviously, we're using CA, so all we're doing is bonding paint to paint, so this will be fragile, but should be all right if we don't swing on it. There we go. Got a painter reflector in there. Um, so we've got some painting to do. Okay. And these are drop down support legs for when this opens up. And they just pop in. There like that. Like so. Well, messing that up, but there we are, it's in. Okay, now the last parts are all to do with the little um, frame that goes on the top. So we're going to start with one of the side pieces. That locates okay. That is the trailer built other than some touch up. So Happy that that is on because I thought this might be tricky, and actually, in the end, it wasn't so bad. Okay, that is the trailer done. Let's get back to the main event. First thing I want to do before we put any delicate parts on is get the masking off. Um, so, a big moment really because. It means that we'll uh, be able to see inside the vehicle for the first time. So, and then I think what we're going to do is mount it in something so that we don't have to handle it while we're building it up. Well, that's turned out okay, hasn't it? Right, I'll do the rest of them off camera and then I'll come back to you.
right, I've cleaned up um, a number of parts that we can then put along the, the top here and various other bits. So um, it's just a matter of working through them in order. Um, we'll start at the back and move forwards, I think. to the wing mirrors I've replaced the uh, plastic struts with uh, a bit of wire um, because it was quite heavily molded on the back so this just looks uh, a lot more in scale and in keeping so we'll glue them on touch them up and give them a bit of a clear coat and they should look great Okay, that's the first set of bits on, which completes step 29 effectively. Got a little bit of painting to do before we put the lenses on, because so these top lights here are blue. Um, but effectively, that's that stage done. So, the next stage gives us um, the back end to do um, primarily, and this um, search lamp and the ladders. details added to the rear just got to paint some of those bits in um, and number plate decals obviously so uh, just got handles and the lamp to do next going to paint up this ladder now I'm going to use um, some uh, paint pens to finish this off um, basically we've got some tiny details that need to be um, black which I guess was painted steel or iron or something and then the ends of the ladder need to be done in uh, gun metal but I'm actually going to use this uh, pewter color um, which is very similar uh, it's a nice metallic color um, and it's nice and easy to put on. So we'll start with the uh, with the black. Uh, 
actually, I'll get my hand dressed, that'll probably make sense. Now both the ladders are the same, so whatever we do on this one, we do on the other one. Okay, so um, we'll let that dry on that side and do the other ladder and then come back and so on. Okay, right, with black done, we can now go and have a look at this. Now, which one do I want? Probably that end. So the ladder ends, um, and there's no marking for this. So you're doing what you think is right. But they seem to go up to about the first rung, these sort of metal covers, so. Flip that over. Make sure there's no little gap at the end. There we go. And we do the same at the other end. The two lamps that sit on the roof um, have to have um, a blue lens. If I show you, you can see they have this nice blue lens here. Um, and for that, I'm going to try and use this black blue, crystal black blue from MIG. Uh, I'm hoping, um, because it's a translucent uh, black blue, that we can just paint it on the lens. Um, the, the lamps themselves have been painted in the ordinary way. I've, I've done a chrome on the inside. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll all work and, and look okay, but we'll, we will see. Give it a good shake. I do like the fact that there's mixing balls in all the, the MIG paints. There we go, that's more than enough. Just get my uh, This is the inside. Yeah, I think that's going to look okay, actually. So that's the lens outer. Yeah, that should look okay. Happy with that. Almost the last thing to do here. Um, I, I pretty much got three things left to do. Um, put the decals on, give the ladders a wash and attach them, and put the lenses in. So we're, we're gonna put the lenses in next. I'm using a uh, GS Hypo cement for this. Um, it's it's basically a watchmaker's glue. Um, I, 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 jewelers use it. Um, the advantage of it is that it's non-gassing. So I like it from that point of view. Um, so you're not going to have problems with the lenses fogging or anything like that. 
Um, the disadvantage of it is it can be a little bit stringy. So um, if you think about um, tube poly cement, it, be it can behave a bit like that. Um, but it does come with an, a needle in the cap, which, which is handy for using as an applicator. So um, it's my preferred clear glue, really. Um, it's easier to use than um, than the sort of the PVA type canopy glues and what have you. So uh, and it dries completely clear. So as long as you can manage the stringing, and you only need to be aware of it to manage it, then um, you're all good. Yeah, I was worried I was going to break that off. There we go. We broke it off. But anyway, the lens is on. The lamp is off. <laughs> right, let's do the uh, headlamps next. Okay, finishing off the ladders now. I'm using um, MIG um, wash for wood. Um, it, it basically is going to darken this down a little bit and and give it a sort of um, used wood look, hopefully. Um, so we'll give this a good shake. Um, and we'll see how we get on. I'm going to start by going around the, the rungs. where I want it darkest. Bet you were wondering how I was going to hold the, rest, the last bit. Right, I'll finish this up and then I'll get back to you. Right, with our wash on, we're now ready to sort of tidy it up, if you like. So I'm using um, MIG's own enamel thinners. It's quite a soft, gentle thinner. I, I really like it. Um, it's not uh, as aggressive as something like White Spirits, which might also attack the um, paint underneath. So the, the process is relatively simple. I show you. So I've got um, a little bit of, of the thinners that I've put into a palette um, and we take, um, put our brush in it, make it wet, then just decant it on the side so that the brush is just damp rather than wet. Um, and then we paint it over the area that we want to clean up let's find a good area so as you can see it's really quite dark there so we're paint, going to just paint it over that I'm going to do this back end as well then wipe the brush which gets any um, of the wash that went into the brush off and then go back and just rub it about and you can see you can manipulate it then into the areas that you want. Keep taking the paint off your brush. There you go, and you can see how we've sort of um, given that a much more authentic um, look and you can do that until your heart's content I mean you can take the whole stuff off if you want but what I'm doing is I'm moving it down to the areas where we've got those bolts and the stops and things um, and leaving a little bit on so you get a sort of wood effect um, and sort of used effect all in one so 
that's that's basically what we're doing. Um, I like to work a section at a time. So what I'll do is, uh, whilst I've got the the ladder in this position, I'll go in and do the bottom rung that's facing me along to the same length, which was to that bolt there. And then we'll go and do the, the rungs in between. So you can see it's relatively quick. It's easy. It doesn't flash off very quickly, this um, thinner, so you've got plenty of time to work it. And if it does, you just put some more on and keep going until you've got the look you that you that you want. So there you go. When you look at the two halves now, one looks more like wood and one still looks like it's been in a paint accident. Right. I will carry on getting um, this done. And then I'll come back to you. Um, um, basically, it's done then. So we'll do a timeout. Then I'll put the decals on and we'll do a roundup. So here we are. It is 12.54, Sunday the 30th of April. I am just in my deadline and I'm done. Well, I'm almost done. I've just got to put the decal number plates on. So I'm calling that done. I'm going to put the decals on um, and then we will wrap up just in time. I honestly thought with adding the decals, that was my last step other than gluing the ladders on. But I'd forgotten I need to put a blob of X27 clear red on the reflectors on the back. So as I was putting the decals on, I noticed I hadn't done that. So that's actually my last job. We're gonna do that in a sec. Um, who remembers when Tamiya paint was that price? And you could buy it from there. Always important to put more than you need in, isn't it? Okay, this is donkey's years old. As anyone who lives in the UK will know from the Beatty's price tag. And it's, well, showing its age a little bit, but it still works. It lasts for a long time because you use it once in a blue moon, basically. Right, let's just get that nicely mixed in. I've got a bit too much on there. Spot more thinner. So, to make a good reflector, get your clear red, your translucent red, whatever you're going to use, to sort of the shade of the reflector that you want. And then the part that is going to be a reflector needs to be painted in silver first. And then you just dab it on, and that will give you a nice reflector like look and it actually dries um, a bit shiny which also helps there we go that's how our reflector's done. That genuinely is the last thing other than gluing the ladders on. So there you have it. 
it is done. The ICM German Light Fire Truck L1500SLF8, whatever that might be. Um, kit number 35527 in 1 to 35 scale. It's built, so what are my final thoughts? Um, it's really a very nice kit indeed, actually. Um, generally, it has gone together very, very well. The fit tolerances are such that you are scraping paint off to make sure things fit properly. But yeah, it goes together like a dream. There are one or two downs, uh, down points, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and there's also some highlights as well, um, but let's just let's just talk about the the kit overall. Firstly, it's quite a unique subject. Um, I'm not aware of any other Mercedes fire truck um, based on on this model, so um, it's a fairly unique kit, um, and it it really does um, look quite nice when it's done um I, the, the red and the black looks really really good now if you do some research you'll find that quite a lot of them um have um also red mud guards as well and the whole thing's red so you've got some options have a look and do some do, do some research but the actual icm kit itself is um is a very good build the instructions are clear um, and they make sense and the build sequence makes sense so from that point of view um, all good um, in terms of downsides uh, there isn't um, uh, any uh, there, there isn't the the little cap that goes on the radiator here with the Mercedes logo on and I, I know it's got a name but I can't bring it to mind um, but yeah, uh, there there is nothing nothing there, and you know, a little bit of photo etch wouldn't have gone amiss for for that. And to be honest, the racks on the top could have been photo etch as well. So um, I'm fairly sure if Mini Art had done this, that's what they would have done. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, n no issues with the kit whatsoever. It, it's lovely. Um, this little bit of cable here, you have to scratch build that if you want to put it on. I, I, I haven't bothered, um, but um, I, it's easy enough to do with a little bit of thin lead wire, should you wish to. Um, in terms of problems with the kit, um, first problem we had was the drive shaft. The instruction isn't too clear on how that goes. You know where it ends uh, um, and where it starts, but the journey it takes between the two is a bit unclear, and I had to enlarge a hole in um, the, the plastic to be able to pass the thick end of the drive shaft through to make it make it connect with the engine block so there's something not right there one way or another um, I also had an issue with the um, radiator because the engine sort of sits at a tilt um, that sort of kicks kicks forward now that in itself isn't a problem if you don't put the fan on but the, the fan, firstly, it was oversized to the opening in the back of the grill, so it wouldn't fit in anyway. And secondly, it was so thick and chunky that actually it was pushing the, the radiator forward. Um, so um, if you want the engine in and you're going to close it up, which is what I've done, then don't put the fan on because the, the fan's getting in the way. I ended up at the last minute just removing the radiator so there's no radiator behind that not that it matters you can't see through you can't see in no one's ever going to know but that that was another another issue that i had um i can't think of any other for issues um the only thing to be aware of in the oh i did have another fit issue the dashboard um, and I have to own up, I've made a bit of a schoolboy error with the dashboard, um, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, but the, the dashboard doesn't have a location, it just sort of sits in and you push it down until it can't go any further and then it is in. Um, I've not quite got mine straight, so I had to sand a bit away to be able to 
put this side panel in uh, with the door. Um, so uh, my um, dashboard is slightly crooked. But also because I had masked the windows before I put the dashboard in, I didn't notice that um, the back of the dashboard was going to be visible through the window, which it doesn't show in the picture. So I wasn't expecting it to. Somehow it looks like my dashboard is sitting higher than it should, uh, and it should perhaps be a little bit lower, which again I hadn't noticed because the window is masked off. So you can see some plastic through the window. It's a big no no. Uh, it's a schoolboy error. It does detract from the model, unfortunately. Nothing I can do about it now. Um, so you can see if I pick this up gently because my trailer is glued on, you can see the dashboard through there, which is a bit disappointing to say the least. But anyway, that's my fault for not test fitting properly and not fitting it before I mask the windows. But there you go. You live and learn, don't you? Um, so... But that's it in terms of problems with the actual kit. Um, with the instructions, they ask you to put these running boards on fairly early in the build. I have to say, um, don't. Um, I ended up putting them on after all of this was assembled um, and much of the, the small parts was assembled. Uh, and that worked a lot, lot better. So I'd recommend doing that. As you know, I replaced mine with wire. I also, um, with the... Uh, rear view mirrors I replace the plastic strut with wire as well which gives you a nice um, authentic look I think I think that looks better we'll take some photos in a minute but yeah um, otherwise brilliant so highlights it's a lovely unique subject looks really nice um it's a post-war um, uh, model but i think you could probably do it as a late war version as well possibly i'm not sure you'd have to check that out yourself um i think it's gone together really well um i loved it i've completely enjoyed building it something very different and it looks absolutely splendid when done it really really does it, it does look great um, if i'd not had the dashboard problem that i've probably created it probably needs a little bit more sanding so it sits down below the window but i hadn't noticed so uh, yeah i'm a bit disappointed in myself for doing that but we all make mistakes we're only human so there you go i'll take some photographs and we'll play out thanks for looking in um, I will see you on the next build or the next video. You take care, enjoy your modelling, and I'll see you very soon.